Hey Gabriel Lick. Hey Gabriel Jose. Where are we today? You can take a sip of your beer if you want, I will wait. I wanted to pause so that I could speak freely. Today we are at the Lone Star in Soma in San Francisco, mostly because this is the only gay bar that's open reliably. I mean, Powerhouse is out there, but we would have to sit in the street. Do you know that there is another full neighborhood of bars, of gay bars in this city? that is not Soma. Yes, but, Castro. I, but I went to the Castro today. Nothing was open. Not the mix, not Lark, not Blind Butcher. At what not, time? Uh, we went there about noon. We went there specifically to have a drink and nothing was open. Huh. So I know that uh, 440 opens at noon. I mean, they may actually change or anything, but yeah. I didn't try 440, but regardless, we're here at the Lone Star. Yeah, that's what matters. And it's becoming, it's what <laughs> yeah, it's what matters. It actually, we should actually just, uh, I wish that we actually had paid. Imagine that we actually had paid for the sit on your face thing, and we could be recording here, looking at a stool that it has the name of our podcast. And I would love to sit on your face while we recorded a podcast. I, I would I, love it. Yeah. <laughs> no, you good. <laughs> Thank you for being so weird. Uh, but yeah, what did we watch today? Today we watched the 2020 critical darling, I would say, uh, The Killing of Two Lovers by director Robert McCoyan. And before we started recording, we had a discussion about how to pronounce that name. We don't know. We're guessing Robert yeah. McCoyan. I think that is good enough. Yeah. At least like close enough, probably. Uh, and this was your pick. Where did you go with it? It was my pick, and it was my pick because... Um, Maybe four or five days ago, my husband, who reads the New York Times religiously, he read about this film. That's why you guys love each other. Yes, it's why I have this intense attraction to my husband. He reads the New York Times. Um, he read about this film. It has very good reviews. I know you don't like Rotten Tomatoes, but it has 92% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. Um, and it was a movie that we could see in theaters if we wanted. Uh, it's playing at the Embarcadero right now in San Francisco. I think both you and I watched it on Amazon Prime, I where guess. I paid $6, I'm yeah, guessing paid you paid the same, yeah. so it was worth it. Yep, and it was like only 90 minutes, I always appreciate that, oh, like, I oh. don't, this is not a... Really One hour and 24 minutes. Yeah, that's <laughs> perfect for a story like this. It's not like those things, like some people just think about, like for example, in video games, that if I'm going to be like paying 50 bucks for a video game, I want it to last like at least 20 hours. He said, no, I'm fine with paying six bucks for watching a movie and being one hour and 24 minutes. That's and perfect. Life. Actually, my husband and I went to the symphony, not this week, but last week, and we paid $75 for our tickets, which is a lot. But the symphony was 70 minutes, and I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Well, the symphony should be a bit longer. But I felt that way about this film. I was like, wait, I just paid $6 for 124 minutes, including credits? No, 124 minutes it wasn't. No, it was not. No, minus the mean, credits, I mean, minus like the interest. 74 minutes. Sorry, like uh, 80, 84 minutes. No, 124. It was one hour and 24 minutes. It was very short. And okay. It was very cheap to rent, but I will say, regardless of whether or not I liked the film, I don't think it justified the rental price. I'll say that. For six bucks? I do think that it does. I do. It's like I think that it's like six bucks is like the perfect price for just renting something like this. All right, so this I was mean, my think, pick. Just think that, for example, like uh, Disney is renting like their new releases on uh, Disney Plus for 30 bucks. Okay, that's insane. But I will say that Disney Plus is also what five ninety nine a month, and yeah, you right. get access to an entire catalog. I, that's what I. That's where I find like. Oh, does this right. make sense? It doesn't matter. In any case, it doesn't yeah. belong to Prime. You know, I think that it's like a bit more of an independent movie, and you can also rent it on YouTube if you want for the same price for six bucks. Oh wow! Yep. I didn't know that. Yeah, I said it earlier. Uh, and this was your pick. You already mentioned that it's because uh, Critical Darling. Uh, so. And it I was a Sundance film. Let me call that out. I have a particularly love for Sundance movies. I go. To, I used to go to Sundance a lot, so I have an appreciation for the aesthetic of Sundance films. So, as this was your pick, I guess that I had to uh, sort of just you go do. over and yep. summarize it. Uh, the movie follows the, li follows the life of a, of a husband that is going through a separation, let's say, and how he's coming to terms 
with it, you know, his relationship with his father, with his uh, wife, and with his kids. But also at the same time, it's also building up the race that he has inside. So the movie opens with him with a gun in his probably former bedroom with his, with his wife and about to shoot his wife today while she's sleeping. And he hears like something, you know, someone like coming out from the restroom that probably is the new boyfriend of the wife and he runs away. And then you see him like behaving like a perfect son, behaving like a perfect father, behaving in perfect ways with absolutely everyone. But from time to time, we see him like just building up his rage about like just taking on, like, you know, like his wife, lover. That everything is arranged, that they can just see other people while they're uh, away, while they're like separated. But. Uh... So I will add that I think this is important is that they live in a very rural Utah town. Utah, yeah. 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 Um, and yes, they do come to an agreement about, hey, this is a trial separation. Um, they both agreed to see separate people. And I think it's very interesting in the film that they both are completely adhering to the rules of the separation, yep. which I, I find admirable. And also at the same time, as someone with a husband who's looking for an open relationship, I'm like, ah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if this is good. But I do respect that the characters were completely respecting the agreements that they came to when they decided to do this trial separation. Yeah. But clearly, it's like he's not David, I think that is his name. David I think so, yeah. not handling it well. Let's just leave it like that. It's like that's something that he's not enjoying, per se. I think it's Derek. Oh, Derek? Yeah, Derek. That's it. Yeah, Derek is not handling it well. He's not handling it well, but I would argue that Derek is completely in on trying to fix the relationship while his wife is not. His wife is like, I'm out, I'm going to date this other person. Well, but also uh, Derek just calls her out. The last scene that is super tense is that he's actually telling her, he's like, look, if you want me, if you, if you already made your mind, it's absolutely fine, just let me go. He's like, just be clear about it. And then the boyfriend just comes out of the house and there's like a extremely tense scene where the guy's like, just let me a minute with him and I would arrange this because this actually just affects me too. He said, no, this is about me and my wife. If, if she actually can say, look, I don't have anything to tell you, he said, yeah, I already made my mind or we will talk later about this. That'll be fine, but she's a bitch about it. I agree with you, she is a bitch, but I also saw her as being completely willing to have discussions, open discussions about the relationship. She... That's she... she? You feel differently? I feel like there are like many times that she, for example, when they're going to have a date, you know, is that she actually finds the excuse that, yeah, you know, our teenager girl is just behaving a weird way. So let's just give a loop around the house and just stay. That is just such a stupid thing. It's like, you're already checked out. Is that like, you're not, and why, why do you keep this person here when actually you told the other guys, hey, why don't you come later? Because the reason is not because of the girl. Is that because probably he already told the guys that just come in 30 minutes and we will have sex in my place. No, you're right. You're right. I I feel like the... So Derek is completely... He's all in. He wants to fix the relationship. Yep. The yep. wife is not. Yep. But I do feel like the wife respected the rules of the separation, which I found interesting because the rules didn't work. They didn't work at all. And no. No, they shouldn't have added anyone else to the mix until they figure it out if they want to be together or not. Especially when they have four kids. I have to say that I found like the contrast. I found the movie funny and super disturbing at the same time. There were like just many scenes that I actually laughed with the kids, with the kids. You know, or even like the dialogue with him, with uh, Derek. So as the son of a broken marriage, I didn't find anything that had to do with the kids funny. I found it super heartbreaking when the teenage girl was like, look, I'm not a child. Like, I can see everything that's happening. I know. It's but super heartbreaking. Didn't, didn't you find, like, funny? I mean, I'm not talking about, like, that trauma, but did you find funny when the guy goes and gives the, uh, the roses? 
you know, he drops the roses and then the kids go out and destroy the roses and start like this. That I, uh, yeah, I <laughs> found that like, super hilarious. <laughs> yeah, and then he's like, just dispose the evidence. <laughs> it's coming back. So for anyone who hasn't seen it, the, the boyfriend comes, delivers flowers. He hopes to deliver it to the wife. The wife is on a quote-unquote date with the estranged husband and the kids take it upon themselves to destroy the flowers and they do it in a very public way where the husband and wife can actually see yep. and they say destroy the evidence they destroy it completely yes it's funny but it's also devastating if you think about those kids who are desperately wanting their parents to get back together and this is well but i think it's like a the teenager girl she's actually putting that pressure on him well, like you have to fight for her, you have to fight for us, and he's doing it. But it's like she's being a part of my friends, she's being a cunt. Is that because she, if she already made her mind, is that oh, I rather like just be by myself, or I want you, I want to replace you with someone else because that's what she's doing? Is that she should actually be honest about it. And I agree with that completely, and it's super sad. I think I identify with the character of Derek a lot because. He desperately wants to make something work that isn't working. It's yeah. not. And yeah. he's trying so hard. He's committing. He is a great dad, 100%. Um, but it's just not working. And I think maybe that's the success of this film is... Maybe I'm wrong, but I think we all can relate to a relationship where we really wanted it to work, but it's just not going to work. It's not. Um which is also interesting because what happened to the relationship? How did it end? We don't know that. I mean, we only know what uh, Jess, that I think there is a teenager girl, she actually says that is that you got mad and you walk away. Is that why are you telling me that I cannot do the same when you did the same to mom? But we don't know exactly what triggered that. If they were like just discussing all the time, if there was like something going on, if they if someone cheated. It doesn't look like it. I mean, what they did say is that they dated when they were in high school, they had yes when they were like really young, and then they had three more boys. And they were feeling is that like, well, we started questioning if we did the right things, if we need some life because of different things. And she actually acknowledged that like, you sacrificed everything. You know, that like you actually provided for us. I was a stay in home mom, it's true. But at the same time, it's like you took care of us. I. I like the cast quite a bit, all of them. They were like impressed. The performances were incredible. Yeah. Like for a, for an indie film, this is yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I was I didn't actually get a chance for checking the the, uh, the cast, but even like the father, there is only two scenes. I thought said that's good. It's good acting. So I see what you say, but Let's remember that this film was 70 minutes, 80 minutes, yeah, a little bit more than 80 minutes. And spoiler alert, the the climax of the film is that Derek, who is the husband of the woman who is they're separated, he kind of inserts himself into a situation where the his wife is interacting with her boyfriend and she, the two of them are having a conflict. But the boyfriend inserts himself, the wife leaves, and the boyfriend beats beats the husband yeah, bloody, yeah, yeah, he's like completely bloody. Um, well, to be completely fair, is that he actually stops the boyfriend at the beginning of the movie, he runs into him in a grocery store, and he actually is about to shoot him from his car to, her, to his car. But what do you think about the fact that the, the boyfriend beats the husband into a bloody pulp, the husband drives away, the wife pursues him and is like, I love you, I love you, I love you, and then the final scene of the film is them like Normal shopping scene. together. Yeah. Like, yeah. They just Normal pretend scene. nothing nothing, nothing yeah. happened. Happen. Yeah. Well, I mean, because that's the part I found like, super disturbing from the perspective that is that like, she's never going to know that he almost murdered her in her sleep, in her bed, at the beginning of the movie. And I do think that like that beginning scene is incredibly important because they never address that again, but there's that undercurrent the entire time. There's yeah. the sense of menace yeah. that's this, horrific. I, I have to say that I love the soundtrack. You know, it was like 
really smart about it. Yes, tell them that you realize that they are like multiple times on the soundtrack. There is a basically noises that I feel like the confusion in the brain of the main character, and also like just gun cocking, yeah, yeah, you know, and just shooting like multiple times. You know, so you actually the first time when he's like just running home, like the soundtrack that he's playing is actually just gunshots multiple times, and it makes you think because you don't see him. If he shot anyone or not, you don't know what the movie is about at the beginning. It's like maybe he murdered them, but it's not. It's a bit more like the internal tension. It's a bit more just representing with the music and the special effects that he's thinking about murdering them. And I will say that the the sound design is incredibly interesting. Yeah. With all of these, like as you said, it was like guns cocking, it was doors slamming, like. But you didn't see any of this. It's completely separate. Like you're just watching this man, primarily Derek, yeah. um, experience whatever he's experiencing. But also, you hear these these sounds that I think contribute to the sense of menace, the sense of like I don't want to say depression, but like they're all the things that Derek was um, dealing with emotionally without actually seeing them. Which I found interesting. Yeah, yeah. No, I I think that it does like a good. I would say the whole movie is about like, just making a a portrait of the right, about like who he is. You know, is that we know that he's a perfect father. But it's, I think that I mentioned this before we start recording. But it reminds me a bit of a of Haneke work. That is a bit more. Is like what about if everyone, regardless if they are like so good or so bad for face value, he said, what about if everyone has the potential of just being a murderer? That's what I'm more is about. He said, what about if I put like this couple that they have been living together? It's true that they gave birth to Isabel Hooper, but it's like, in any case, they're supposed to be good people. And uh, what about if we put them in an impossible situation? How are they going to be reacting? Could they actually commit something like murder? He said, that's the same situation, I think, that it will happen. Here, that is a weird person, like this guy that is a perfect father. What happens if something like this occurs to him? And I will say that I did find interesting about the film that what it presents itself to be is kind of like a portrait of a relationship that's failing. There are kids that are suffering because of the separation of their parents. Yep. This film is not about that. It's a portrait of a man. Yep. It's a portrait of a man who's on the edge and he's about to do... He's prepared to do something that's incredibly awful. Ultimately, he gets what he wants. But not because he deserves it. He's just a psychopath. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's in a sense. He's, he's worse. Yeah. It's like when you actually connect all the dots, when you realize about like he was about to murder his wife. Like the person that he loves is, is insane. He's like, that's, I mean, I felt like super disturbed about that. You know, that, that last scene with the, uh, with the discussion with the boyfriend, he said, yeah, the boyfriend is also insane. Yeah, for sure. He's like, this woman has a type. I mean, there's people that they are like, yes, not okay in the head, but maybe he said they're not okay in the head, but they are like pretty good about hiding that until the right circumstances happen. I completely agree, and I think this is a film where the contextual clues are so important because the scene that you have brought up a few times where he's about to shoot her in the head, that happens in the very first few minutes, oh, yeah, and they never address it again, but you're, you're expected as a viewer to understand this is the undercurrent that, yeah. that like, carries the film. Yeah. This is not like a healthy guy, this is not somebody who's fighting just for the survival of his family. He is unhinged. Yeah. And beyond that first scene, they bury that. Yeah. Like, you're just supposed to see him as this person fighting for his marriage. No, he's a sociopath. No, he I mean, is. He, from time to time, he surfaces. Do you know, it's like when he's uh, just punching the, uh, the training dummy yeah. at his place, or he's like shooting the training dummy. Is that there are like points, or even when he's about to shoot from his car to the boyfriend's car, is that there are like points that is like, that's insanity. Is that like, this guy is supposed to be only the amazing father that we are displayed? Is that like, I could be more like just rooting for him, but he's not. Is that like, he's a dangerous human being, but no one else sees that. Is you're right. Is that like, he's a, a psychopath. Is that like, he's good about like just projecting 
what I think there is the right thing. And I don't doubt that he loves his wife. I don't doubt, I mean, he composed that terrible songwriter music. <laughs> it's so I bad. It's it. so bad. Yeah. And, uh, and also, he's a good father. And we see him interacting with the kids. And he's, and every single thing is adorable when he's with the kids. But I think that is like, what is amazing is that kind of contrast and it's actually you believe both of the characters. Do you think that this movie could have taken other places that they are not rural America would have been in LA, for example? If it had been in LA, it would have been a completely different story. Like what's that Jake Gyllenhaal film we watched about the paparazzi and Enemy? No, it's not enemy, but it had Tony Collette in it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. If this was in LA or New York or San Francisco, it would oh have been... Oh my god, Velvet Basso? That's the one, yes. Oh my god, man. No. This movie would have been very different. The fact that it was placed in rural America, particularly in Utah, where the vast majority of people are religious, it just takes on a very different meaning. But they never... I mean, I was thinking... I actually checked like multiple times. I thought that it was Idaho. Because maybe it could be Idaho. It looks yeah, exactly the same. Just the landscape, maybe similar. When it, when it's a cute, I take you, I thought that it's like does it matter? I mean, does it really matter? Like what a specific state? Because they never talk about Mormons. They never talk about religion. They never go to church. So I feel it's like does it really matter about where they are exactly? I I see what you say, but I can't help but think that the. The placement of the story in rural Utah, it has to mean something. It has to mean something. Okay, that's the thing, because I'm not American, so it's like I'm curious about, like, what am I missing here? Because I feel a bit more like circumstantial. Well, I will say that after watching the entire film, I felt a little bit empty. I don't think the film succeeded. I think it was beautiful. I think it's on a specific scale that people at Sundance specifically value. Um, but I'm honestly mystified why this has 92% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's okay. It's an okay film, but it's not great. But, okay. I mean, it's what I always tell you about Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes is not about like if it's great or it's not great. It's about like if it's above mediocre or not. And this is above mediocre. It is. It is completely above mediocre. But I think even though you're not an American, I mean, you've lived here longer than I have in this city, I didn't get anything out of this film that I think you didn't get. I honestly, now that you mentioned this, it's, it's true. I didn't take anything. It left me rattle. It left me rattle. Like that last scene, I'm sorry, like those last scenes, the last 20 minutes, is like left me like completely rattle. Like the discussion, how the increase happens with the wife. And at the end, the boyfriend comes out, and at the end, the wife goes away. Albeit the wife knows what is going to be like happening, you know. But the boyfriend, that is another, like, pretty good sociopath, is that he has solid just says, I'm really sorry, I know that I shouldn't have this, but I'm pretty sure if we are solid just by ourselves, we can arrange this, that you know what is going to happen, bitch. And you actually just walk away, because you want your, your husband as whoop. And I, I do think the wife pursued the path of least resistance. She was like, oh, I like this new boyfriend, but my husband is yeah. going to react in this insane way. I don't know what this film wanted me to feel. I don't, I, I, I don't understand it. I just took it from the Haneke perspective. I just took it from the perspective that he say, you can find someone that, is, that it looks absolutely perfect. And they may be There's something darker. Exactly. And they may be like just bad seats insane, you but, know, under the right circumstances. But because you've referenced Michael Haneke so much, if you want to compare the two, I don't think this film has any sort of staying power. This film will be forgotten in six months, whereas Haneke managed... To yeah, it's a bit more timeless. And I think that this is, is beautifully shot, you know? I think that it has a like, really good acting, I think that it has like a decent script, but at the same time I agree with you that it's like, um, that was it. I didn't regret watching it. I actually have to say that I really like it, and I felt it's like, wow, it has just like me shaking up, you know, but you're right, that probably I'm not going to be remembering it. So I don't want to, to get into our questions too soon, but when I watched this, I was like, it's beautiful, it makes 
perfect sense in the context of Sundance as a film festival. <laughs> yeah. But well, I'm not going to recommend this to anybody. I don't think it was super... It, it didn't make me think differently about the way I see the world, about the way I see other people experiencing the world. Well, I don't know, man. I mean, I just feel like uh, it didn't change how I look at the world. But it's true that it's going to be like just leaving me a bit more of a... I don't know, I feel like it was like an aesthetic, nice experience to enjoy, you know? Um, but if it's had like an elevated experience on it, I don't think so. Because as I mentioned Hanneke multiple times, I think that a more is an elevated experience. I don't think that this is an elevated experience. And that's the, the Hanneke film you would compare to this, Amor? Yes. I think so, but as this movie actually does, there is also something weird with the pacing that it actually starts with one of the highlights of the movie, that is a him about to kill the wife and the lover, or at least the wife. And then don't things don't change too much from then? You know, it's, it's a bit more that okay, we already know what the tension is, we already know like what the problem is, is that we just want a resolution, but maybe we are never going to have it. So let me ask you this, which of the the husband or the wife do you find more emotionally healthy, mature, rational? I think that they are both of the broken human beings in different ways. I think that the husband is a sociopath, if he's actually just willing to break into his own house for killing his wife, is that that's insane. But yeah, so like the wife, it almost feel like he's just stringing him along. It's not as bad, definitely, as just murdering someone in the wrestling. But it's at the same time, it's like, we don't know exactly how this arrangement was made, but it's pretty clear that she's mostly out of it. So I ask you that because, because of that beginning scene, we see that he's completely unbalanced, completely unbalanced. He's ready to murder this woman that he says that he loves and he wants to work on, on the marriage. And for the rest of the, the movie, we see that the, the wife is actually very... She's willing to agree to terms of their separation. She's willing to apologize when, when she goes outside of kind of their agreement. Not that she does anything like completely unbalanced, but when he says, hey, you did this and I don't feel comfortable with it, she was like, you're right, I'm sorry. I honestly feel like this film is a portrait of a man that's batshit insane, but manages to get what he wants. Okay, okay, is this is this some kind of critique about like white entitlement? It's not about white entitlement, I think it's just about like, when a breakup happens, emotions are are so heightened that people see things so differently, and I, I feel like you could become empathetic to either the woman or the man, and you have to choose. But at, at the end of the day, the filmmakers wanted us to see that the, that the husband is so unbalanced that if you chose him as the guy you were empathetic with, you're insane. Well, but the thing is that this everything is like pretty compartmentalized. It's like there are scenes that he's perfect. He's a human being, it's like he's amazing. But then there are other scenes that like, this guy is completely broken. He's like, well, not broken, he's like that's the range. Yeah, I mean, nobody stands at the foot of the bed of his wife that he wants to get back together with and, and holds a gun to her head. Yep. Like, that's insane. Yep. The, the wife never does anything like that. Yep. I mean, no one knows about it. Only the audience, you know, and I think that that's the point of this movie. I mean, that was... I, honestly, regardless if he succeeds or not, if it's going to be like a lasting appeal about it, I still cannot think of any movie that presents us a main character in this kind of way. So, without getting to our questions, would you say you enjoyed this film? I did, but I enjoyed it in a painful kind of way. Like it was unpleasant to watch, but you were like, oh, I, there's artistic value to this? Yeah. yeah. Let's go over the questions, because I think that we already like, just went implicitly over several of them. Alright, sounds good. 
So, would you watch this film again, Jose? Uh, yes, but in a while. No freaking doubt. So you would wait for a while, but you would be interested? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And besides that I would watch it with someone. It's definitely not with a baby, but it's like with someone that is like, hey, look, this in the film. It's like, this is like, it's, I found surprising that it was not an A24 film. You know? Because like, this is the kind of style I just shot on four thirds. He said, this is the kind of stuff that A24 wants to do. Yeah, this is exactly their type of movie. Yeah. So, uh, I would... It's not that I wouldn't watch it again. I would never, like, suggest to my husband in a year, oh my god, we have to watch this film. If it were on TV, I would watch it again 100%, but... uh, It won't go out anyway. Exactly. So, would you recommend it? Yes. Yes, I mean, I think that the character of study is good. It's, it's fairly different from everything that I've seen. Yeah, I would also recommend it. I think it's an interesting film. I honestly don't know how I feel about it, but if somebody came to me and was like, hey, I really like this sort of dark... This like dark film where I don't know how I feel about it. I'd be like, oh my god, if this is your type of film, watch this. Yeah. Uh, so would you remember it? Uh, I think so. I think so. Do you, do you feel like the main actor did he remind you a bit of Casey Affleck? Yes, one hundred percent. Okay, okay, yeah. not only me, but at the minute, like, wow, Casey Affleck is on this. Uh, he he learned how to act. Oh my god! He should have been in this film. No, he shouldn't. <laughs> he shouldn't be on any film. That's All right, that's fair. That's fair. But I do feel like if I were casting this film, I would be like, "Can we get Casey Affleck?" And if they said no, I'd be like, "Okay, get this so guy." Yeah. I think that this guy like acted better than Casey Affleck. Can. Oh, that makes me sad. <laughs> I mean, that's the reason why I like against the story so much. Because, uh, yep, they work around his limitations, they just put a blanket on top of it. <laughs> so, is there anything artistic about it? Uh, yes. But it's once again one of those... I mean, it's not only about like, just shooting them, shooting it in, uh, in Utah, in the middle of nowhere, and it's, the landscape is gorgeous. And you have this kind of feeling the whole time of desolation. It feels like there is nothing else. They are like, what, like 12 actors credited for the movie? Yeah, yeah, I would agree. And they are like three, sorry, like four kids, the couple, the boyfriend, the father, and the woman. Yeah, the woman that I saw the song first job, uh, the job to the, uh, to the husband. Is that there are like some clerks or some this, but that's it. Is the, the world is so reduced that I felt like it actually just wants to just say, this is a guy that is losing the only reason for living that he had. And he's feeling betrayed about it. Yeah, I would say that there's a lot artistic about it, the direction style. I mean, it's exactly my, typically it's my type of film, but there's a limit to that direction impression impressing me. Um, but yes, absolutely. There's a strong direction style. I think it's beautiful. I think the scale we have to pay attention to and the scale I loved. I think the fact that it was, it was how many minutes? Uh, 84, 84. 84. It's like, yes, this is the perfect amount of time for this story. Yep. And nothing was required beyond that. Yeah. Uh, so next question. Is, is this a timeless piece? I think so. I think so. There is nothing about technology that is like, too dependent on the movie or anything. It's a bit more about like, just a man projecting like the perfect facade and at the same time like, just being bad thing insane. And that's something that it can happen at any point. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like this was, again, the perfect scale for the story. It has nothing rooted in any sort of time period. And if we were to watch this 30 years in the future, we would be examining the same sort of issues that it wants us to examine. Yeah. Uh, would you turn this into a TV show? No. I mean, are I'm you pre- sure about that? I mean, I'm pretty sure that there would be some studios who wouldn't do that. You know, about like every single episode, like just making like formulaic from the perspective that like, we saw, like just perfect life 
of the husband. I mean, yeah, even Dexter, for example. <laughs> you know, but yeah, he's like all these kind of social skills, a bit shy or whatever, and then he just goes and murders someone because he has to leave. <laughs> Now the same thing here. Is that he could just go to a small, even a smaller village in, uh, in Utah and just murdering someone. Yep, nope, I completely agree. I mean, I wouldn't do it, but it's possible to do it. In the, in the atmosphere of the film, yes. Yeah. Uh, so the last question before we score, do you think this could have been better? Honestly, I like it. And before we go into the score, I like it it's a lot. You know, so I don't know if you can make something better with this premise. Yeah, to be honest, I, I would say the answer is no, because this film understood its scale, it understood the dimensions of the story. It's a little bit small in the terms of like the type of story I like, yep. but for what this film wanted to be, it's perfect. Yep. I don't want to say perfect, but it understood. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Yeah, what he what he wanted to do instead yes. of going crazy. Yeah. So I have no for you, no for me, and the oh, last. Yes, we should score. So my score, as you pick it up, I think that it's my turn to score first. Is going to be an eight. Oh wow. Yeah, I was honestly surprised. You know, there was only a point that I look away. And then I had to actually rewind. That is like when he starts singing in the car. Like, oh yeah, I'm going and made this like, songwriting song. And it felt like so cringy. That is like, yeah, you're like just singing about like, I want to yeah. fix things. Oh god, that scene was so cringy, so cringy. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, it just shows that he really wants to fix things. But also he was ready to just murder his own wife. And I like that, like, when he sang that song so terribly, you're like, clearly you don't have the skills to make this song perform, and you don't have the skills to fix your marriage. You don't. <laughs> okay. So That's yeah, fair. I... For me, this well, film... I mean, I don't know if he actually has the skills or not for saving the marriage. I think that if, like, if he actually was willing to fix the marriage, he would. I mean, he was willing to just have like a perfect date, like just trying to fix things. What else can he do? But that's the point: is that he there's nothing more he can do because he doesn't have the capacity. Well, but it's not about him on that perspective. Like, I don't. I haven't. My parents didn't go through a divorce. They're like happily married, and I think that is, that's the part about more like you that when he actually asked Mrs. Tables, "Is that did you have a happy marriage?" He said, "Look, love is a feeling." Feelings come and go. It's a bit more about respect. Respect is actually what is going to be like just building the basis of a lasting, you know. Be because you could, you don't have like the offer that you have here. It's like exactly what you were asking me a moment ago when we were on the back patio. It's like who you have sex with. Is that you have like such an offer here that you can just pick whoever. Is that they don't. Maybe that's the reason why they're in the middle of nowhere. And that's a, a very good reference because I, I had kind of forgotten about that scene where. Derek asks a woman that's hiring him to do a job, and she's like, he says, do you have a happy, happy marriage? And she's like, well, no, but we respect each other. Yeah. Which was very poignant, because it's like, what can you logically expect from a relationship? Yeah. Do you have to be in love? Do you have to have that, like, that feeling where you, you all only want to be with this person? Or is it more pragmatic? Do you want to... Just have someone you feel safe with. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. So sorry. That was my score. Eight. What is your score? So mine is seven. I mean, uh, again, five is mediocre. Seven point five is good. This was better than mediocre, but it left me wanting so much more. It left me wanting more emotional involvement, more story. I think the direction is fantastic, but this film left me wanting more. I had to say that when I was watching this movie, my score was going to be like higher, but when we talked before the recording and during the recording, there was a question that I had when I finished watching it about, uh, so is this his first movie? 
No, he's directed like twenty I know, films. I know, but yeah. I started what I asked myself, and he said, "Oh, you know, it's like this sounds like the kind of movie that someone that does for the first one, and then he actually develops, you know, this kind of I don't know, like a story." And I feel he said, like, "No, he had already like twenty-four titles." Yeah, he's like, "It's it's pretty clear," and this was like writing, sort of like written, directed, and edited by him. Yeah, is that like he? He's reached the like capacity yeah, of yeah, yeah. what he can do. I I really like it. I really like it. You know, I was like surprised at oh, how good it was. It's like I honestly I was just thankful about like yeah, thank you so much for bringing this up because I would have never go to watch it and I think that is as good as it can be. And I agree. I don't think the the director has any more room to grow. Like after twenty films. This is what he has to offer, and it's great. I think it's beautiful, but I don't think it's elevated, like you said. From my perspective, it's a bit elevated. I would have to watch it in a year. You know, this is a movie that I would be just willing to watch again in a year and just see how I feel about it. But today, it left me like pretty rattled. You know, like the end. That is that he stars as a hunter, and then he becomes the prey of the boyfriend. And he runs away, almost like just reinforcing the idea of the teenager girl about like you are a losing dad, you are a loser, you know. And I did expect to like this film more than I did, a lot more than I did. That's not to say it's bad. I just I should have liked this film more than a seven. I'm surprised that you only give it a seven, but respect. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, anything else to say about this one? So, I just want to know what we're watching next. So, as I punished you last time with six hours of Baz Luhrmann, I felt I had to go to the other extreme and just go in with something like pretty short, you know? So, I decided to go with the 30 minutes long short by Pedro Almodovar, his first production in English, and actually it's with Tilda Swinton. So we're going to be watching The Human Voice. Which is everything that we like, both of uh, us. Yes. yes. Well, it's everything that every single gay person with taste <laughs> wants. <laughs> but yeah, man, uh, anything else to say about this movie or anything in general? No, nothing else. Yeah. Well, then to those 12 people listening to us, thank you so much. Uh, Wash your hands. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>